We're very happy to have with us here, a little bit spontaneously, three students that are active in the Fridays for Future movement. Here we go. Give them a warm hand. This was not planned, but I'm happy that you're here, and I'm very, very, very happy for what you're doing on Fridays. Please introduce yourselves. Hello, my name is Edward. I'm 18, and I've been striking since November. And where are you from? From Stockholm. You're from Stockholm. Um, my name is Tommy. I'm from Berlin, and I've been striking since end of January. I'm Lena. I'm from Switzerland, and I have been striking since December. So I have... Yes. I have one major question for all three of you. What is your biggest hope that your actions will be able to achieve? Uh, well, I suppose you could cut them short in a few sentences and those would go, we, we don't have time. Um, we really want the, this, uh, the politicians to accept that they need to listen to the scientists in order to get past this massive threshold that we call a climate crisis. Um, and the reason that they need to listen to the scientists is because of the great pressure we have on ourselves right now to pass it, pass the threshold. The threshold of uh, already at 1.1 degrees causing a sixth great mass extinction. Um, the threshold of at two degrees and possibly even one degree is causing a climate runaway effect, um, which could be catastrophic for our whole planet. Thank you. And what do you, when, when you go out and strike on Fridays in your country, what, is, what, do you, what, do you, what are the sort of messages that you get from your friends and what is the feeling you grasp? Okay, um, so we. For us, it's really important to uh, make one thing clear. Um, our current economy is, uh, well, basically focused on making more and more profits. And the problem with that is that cuts are co um, that cause co damn English um, that people try to save money um, in, for example, things like environmental protection. And of course, businesses try to sell as much as possible, produce as much as possible, and therefore use as much resources as possible. So therefore, it basically pays off for them to destroy our environment. Mm. And that's why I have one important message for the people here um, investing in our current economy. You are part of the problem. We need, in order to protect our environment, we need, really, we need to change our economic system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would you like to add something? I just want to add that please join our strikes on Fridays. Um, the next big global strike is on the 24th of May and it's going to be big and it's really important that everyone joins these strikes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your work and thank you for coming. Well, this is important, very important what the youth is doing and why should they be alone, right? Let's just join them on Fridays if we can and we should be able to, that's what I say. So we have a panel discussion again up here. This time we will have more people uh, present uh, on the stage, so please join me here. Panila Baymak, you are a master researcher focused on sustainability, uh, the impacts of ICT and you're from Ericsson. And we also have Nick Nuttall from Earth Day. There you are, Nick. Okay. Please join us. And we have, of okay. course, Ingmar Renso okay. from um, We Don't Have Time, the founder. Please move along. We can join, join me here on this table, Pernilla. And we have Christina Kolmark, who is also a climate reality leader. Just like Ingmar, you see the re green rings. That means that they're climate reality leaders. And we also have Tuve. Uh, Tuve is from uh, Global Utmoni. Tuve Alström. And you also have a green ring yes. somewhere on your jacket here. <laughs> Wonderful to have all of you here. So I'd like to start off with an open question. What does Together We Are The Solution mean to you? Anyone? 
Nick, you're the okay, quickest. I, I, I think you have to listen to all these presentations. I mean, I think that one thing's absolutely clear that um, we've got a lot of action happening in the world. You know, that we're not starting from ground zero, but there is a fragility in the political process, in the economic process, and in the scientific process, and that fragility is ourselves. And unless we all stand together now, unless the citizens of the world come together and really demand and give the governments the license to operate in a sustainable future, mm -hmm. put pressure on the companies and consumer products to actually produce what is needed, not what sells, uh, I don't think we're going to get anywhere. But I think I'm cautiously optimistic when I see these young people mm -hmm. and I see the parents also now standing up mm -hmm. that maybe we do have the beginnings of a citizens' movement again like we did in 1970 on Earth Day. Because uh, without that, it's not going to work. And that's what being together is in mm -hmm. terms of the solutions. Thank you. Yeah. To Vossum, you uh, you're, you're work with Global Utmaning, Global yes. Challenge is the translation into English. And you have your office here and you work very closely with, with We Don't Have Time. What is your take on this, on this message? Together we are the solution. I mean, for me, to, to create platforms, that is most what we do, create platforms where politicians, scientists, uh, companies and civil society can meet together mm -hmm. and to form new solutions uh, for sustainable development. So I think everybody has to really come together to create the solution. So, I mean, the politicians must take brave and sometimes very uncomfortable decisions and companies as well to be more circular and to, to come to a fossil-free world. But also me, myself, and me, my, all the women and, and men on the streets, we have to really think about what we are doing to really be the change we need today. So, I mean, it's so easy to point the fingers, like I hear it so often, like, oh, the politicians should do their job. No, we all should do our job. So that is, yeah, what we're doing here. Together, we are the solution. Thank you, Tuve. Christina Kolmak, you as an Ingmar and, and Tuve, the, your global climate reality leaders, and you took part in Al Gore's education uh, training program to become this and to work with climate topics. Uh, this is important work that you're doing. What would you say is the connection between what you've been taught in this training and what's happening here today with the We Don't Have Time? Well, I would say that at the training, you get to meet all these people with mm -hmm. insights like we have today here because you need the insight to be able to act. And what uh, Al Gore and Climate Reality do is do, they're doing is to train us all over the world, and then you're sent back to train people locally. Mm. So that's what I do, and all of us do. We pledge to do that, and I do it in the business community. And this is when I see it together, because it's not just any group, it's a management team or a strategy department, and then we, we raise the level of awareness together and they get a shock about what the climate crisis is about. Mm. And then we go into action. So what do you need to do? So that's, that's one way of bringing insight into action uh, that climate reality is actually doing. Thank you, Christina. Um, Penila Weimark, uh, you work with Johan Falk, who just presented before the Exponential uh, Climate Roadmap. Um, how would you say that companies can collaborate better with academia and also civil society? Because you're a good example at Ericsson of actually doing this. Yeah, I, I think it's very, very important for companies to stand on a solid ground of facts. And uh, this is the reason why we have been working. Uh, we have a, our own research department where we are doing uh, collaborations with universities and we publish peer-reviewed pa papers and so on. And, uh, <coughs> Uh, by getting the facts, that enables you to, to, to uh, take good decisions and it also uh, gives you credibility. And I think uh, talking about the climate, uh, uh, the, the climate crisis, which is uh, perhaps the most, uh, the hugest uh, challenge that uh, humanity has met, uh, we need really to combine our different competences and that we need to bring our competencies and knowledge as companies together with the knowledge from academia and, and uh, accelerate the change. Thank you, Panila. Um, Ingmar, Tessa Kahn spoke earlier uh, today about the importance of, of ur the essence of urgency and it's even more important to act together now than ever before. And she referred to, to previous examples in history that we actually did and succeeded. Um, when you founded this organization, uh, what were your hopes that this could really achieve? And now you're standing here a year later. Um, what are your feelings? Uh, 
my hope when I founded this organization was uh, the first goal is that we need to see the problem as severe as it, it actually mm. is. And uh, we, here we have seen some really great progress the two year, uh, latest year. Mm. Uh, if you were talking about the climate crisis as many people, many leaders today are, you will have been seen as totally alarmist and crazy just two years ago. It's only two years. Mm -hmm. And the conversation about the climate crisis, I mean, I don't think normal people used the term climate crisis two years ago. So it's happening a lot. And people are also know that we don't have time. We need to act. And we are seeing a lot of new organizations. Our is just one example. It's a lot of other organizations out there. Friday for Future, Extinction Rebellion, etc., etc. Uh, and the old ones is also starting to awakening and, and it's really open for cooperating. Mm -hmm. And I'm s absolutely certain that we will succeed if we keep on doing this together on our own way, but cooperating. Mm -hmm. So that's what our goal is, is to actually help everyone to be part of the solution mm -hmm. and connect everyone that wants to contribute. Thank you, Imbar. I have one. I have one final question to anyone can answer. Um, how do we get more big actors like the UN and the EU to grasp this and to move on? Is it by Vote Earth? That's one way, of course. Any other uh, solutions that we need to sort of... I, th I think there's a real elephant in the room here. I think it's been here all day and Jeffrey Sachs uh, touched on it which is we are living in a world right, right now that's never been richer. You know, I, I mean, the world has never had more money. Uh, interest rates are so low that some people are actually paying the banks to actually look after money. Yet, is this money investing in the new economy? Why is it not investing in the new economy? Why is it sitting either on the sidelines or continuing, as Jeffrey points out, like JP Morgan, to invest in the fossil fuel industry? Why is it doing that? We still have a screwed economic structure right here on this planet, which is valuing degradation and destruction and short-termism over the long-term future of the world that needs to happen. And I think that when you look at your, uh, your, your campaign, if I can put it that way, uh, with the little symbols and things like that and the hearts, it can't just be corporates. It has to be the investors as well. Yes. Because this thing is not going to be turned around unless that money starts flowing into the right kind of economy. That's absolutely possible. Yeah, I think it, on top of that, I think it's very important to build a co coalition of the willing to, to join forces with the frontrunners because there are frontrunners among companies, among cities, among individuals, among, among uh, uh, politicians. So I, I think we need to get stronger together. Well, thank you very much for, for taking, taking part in this panel. It's short and sweet, but we need to... <laughs> get this uh, show uh, finished. <laughs> we have a deadline, actually. Uh, so thank you, Tove. Thank you, Nick. Thank, thank you, Christina. You. And you will stay here, Ingmar, with me for a bit. And uh, thank you very much, Panela, for joining us. Give them a warm hand. <laughs> here we go. Please, Frida Berry Eklund, join us up here on the stage. Frida has been working hard downstairs in the moon stage today. And of course, I am sure you are too very curious what has been going on. Well, excitingly, we have launched 24 campaigns Whoa. today. <laughs> Big hand. And there's been some really exciting things happening. So we have uh, a campaign to stop coal power plants in France by 2020. We have climate love for vegetarian food as default in high schools. We have a climate movement of students uh, causing, um, uh, causing universities to change. And, and parents rising up to tackle climate change. So a variety of amazing campaigns. And I see here in the, in the, on the sidelines here, we have some people waiting with cubes. So let us know what's going to happen. We do. Uh, we're going to bring up five of the campaigns that are going to, you're going to get to hear a little snippet of what they've talked about and what's already online. So I'd like to welcome to the stage Stina Johansson from V Love. 
Uh, Gustav Johansson från Jävligt gott. Ben Clifford från Ergio Studios. Carl Oskar Levenchek från Ocean Sky. And Maja Rosén från We Stay on the Ground. Uh, Gustav, starting with you, please mm. tell us about your campaign in one minute. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my name is Gustav Johansson and I run Sweden's largest vegan food blog, Jävligt gott. And my campaign is called Hashtag Save the Veggie Burger. And it's aimed at Save the Veggie Burger, yes. You might... Uh, is it a joke? No, it's not a joke. It's the European Parliament's Agricultural Committee who's proposed a legislation uh, that uh, means to bring out a ban on the usage, usage of the words burgers, steaks and sausages for vegan products. And that might sound totally weird. It actually was uh, delivered on the 1st of April as well. But it's not a joke. It's actually legislation that's already in effect in France. And there is a similar legislation for dairy products in the entire EU uh, in effect today. And they say this is to help consumers from being confused in the grocery stores. I say when you call it pea discs and soy tubes, there will be way much more confusion. Uh, and we want to lift this question to show that the the European Parliament should not be trying to legislate and to make it even harder to find sustainable products and alternatives. And it's, instead, they should use the CAP, the Common Agricultural Politics, to help European farmers transition into more sustainable farming and so on. So that's what we want to do when we want to save the veggie burger. We want to put focus on what the European Parliament actually should be doing with their power to help people eat more sustainable rather than to make it harder. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Stina, tell us about your campaign. Yes, um, our campaign is uh, targeting C40 cities. Um, so Velov Bikes is producing a high capacity cargo bike with a removable one cubic meter container. And this containerized uh, last mile delivery system can really change uh, how we transport goods in uh, urban areas. Uh, today, too many vans are taking up both highway space and uh, uh, congested city streets, which has a lot of negative impacts on environment and the city's uh, livability. So um, we want the C40s, uh, the mega cities, the network of mega cities, to um, uh, enable the best possible uh, smartest uh, transport solutions. Uh, by planning for and building and providing city hubs. Uh, with these city hubs, you can shift the goods uh, in a smooth way to the last mile delivery of vehicles, uh, so we get less emissions. So we want uh, this to be enabled uh, for the sake of the cities, uh, because uh, we all live in cities uh, that have a high impact, and we want uh, both logistic companies and other actors to be able to use this. So the campaign is uh, online and you can uh, like it and you can also read more about it there. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Ben, tell us about your campaign. Hey, yeah, so I'm uh, Ben. I run an eco-friendly uh, web hosting company uh, and it's called Ergio Studios. My campaign is all about actually giving climate love to big business, uh, surprisingly, uh, Google in particular. Um, basically, the, in, the internet isn't really something that we uh, associate with tackling the, the climate crisis normally. Um, but actually, even though using the cloud kind of feels very virtual and you know, everything's kind of magically through the air, uh, the internet is actually powered by a really big kind of physical infrastructure, and in particular data centers. Uh, and most data centers, which is kind of the engine room of the internet basically, uh, still use fossil fuels, uh, quite a lot of it. Um, so surprisingly, Google has already moved all of its kind of cloud infrastructure to renewables. Um, that's way ahead of their competition. Most people haven't done that yet. Um, so even though technically Google are kind of a competitor <laughs> of ours, uh, they are doing a really, really good job of kind of leading the sector. Uh, and I think uh, people uh, should be following their lead. So that, uh, that's what mine's about. So if you go to, I think it's called Climate Love for Google's Renewable Cloud, uh, that's my campaign. Get behind it. Great. Carl Oscar, you're next. Tell us about your campaign. 
Yes, we, our name is Ocean Sky, it's a company. And we have an idea that took almost eight years of our lives. And this is the idea. And it's a campaign to urge the EU Commission to redirect funds into sustainable aviation. So a little bit of background on that. We believe that we cannot um, invest in conventional aviation and conventional aircrafts. They will be fossil driven and uh, oil dependent as far as we can see. It's not a solution to uh, put battery powered commercial aircraft into aviation. It's not a solution to um, use biofuel. We need, uh, we need uh, equipment that is hyper efficient. We need equipment that doesn't uh, require infrastructure in airports. And uh, Ocean Sky uh, has developed a business model in order to reintroduce lighter than air technology into aviation. That's uh, what you know as airships or hybrid aircraft. And uh, we urged the EU to redirect the funds into lighter than air technology sector instead of a fossil driven oil dependent aviation industry. And today was a big day for us. We, uh, after eight years, we launched um, travel or an expedition to the North Pole to sell tickets today on Earth Day, uh, where we will take passengers in 2023 to fly from Svalbard to the North Pole. And uh, if you want to know more about this, visit us in uh, booth 1.2 down the corridor here. Thank you. And last but not least, Maya, tell us about your campaign. Thank you. Yes, my name is Maya Rosén, and I'm the founder and president of We Stay on the Ground, uh, and which is an organization that ran the campaign Fly Free 2020, in which people pledged to stay on the ground next year, provided that 100,000 people from their country promised to do the same thing. So this is a way where you can really make a big difference for the climate, because this is not only about the tons of emissions that you will personally save, it's about how this decision affects people around you. So if you sign up for this campaign, you contribute to 100,000 Swedes doing the same. And then we would really send a very clear signal to our politicians, and also, I think, even more importantly, to each other, that we are actually many that are prepared to do what it takes to save the climate. And we run this campaign not only in Sweden, but also in the UK, Denmark, Belgium and France. And it's about to start in several other countries as well. And we're hoping to run this campaign all over the world. So if anyone looking at this is interested to start this campaign, please contact us and we will help you to get started. And don't forget everyone to sign up for Flight Free 2020. Thank you. Can I say something? That uh, is uh, Flight Free 2020, that's really good. And I support that campaign, but that's for airplanes, right? Not airships. <laughs> Sustainable airships. All right. Well, thank you all campaigners, and thank you Frida Berry Eklund for handling the, handling the moon stage all day in all these 22 pitches, this is amazing. We have 24. To go, uh, 24, we have to go in and watch them afterwards online, those of, you, those of us that were busy on this, on this end of the, of the show. Um, now it's time to conclude, and would like to thank all the people here visiting us in the audience here at Northrend House, and all of you taking part online. The last digit I heard was 3,000 viewers, and I'm sure it's risen since then. And, and it's bye bye for me, and I'm handing off to Ingma, who will do the final words on this fa fabulous day. Thank you, Ingma. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Katarina. Uh, one year ago, in this exact moment, I was standing in front of the cameras at the world's first no-fly climate conference. The We Don't Have Time climate conference hosted by us on Earth Day 2018. 
Over 9,000 people from 90 countries watched that conference back then. Three months before that, our organization didn't even have an office. We didn't even exist. So when I'm looking back on this journey, it is truly amazing of what a small group of dedicated people could achieve when they strongly believe in, a, in an ID. An ID that we solve the climate crisis if and when we work together. No matter where we live in the world, no matter of any national borders or identity, the climate crisis is a global crisis. And so are we. The internet and social media connect all of us today. And with our platform we have released here today, will it be possible to cooperate and prove the power of many, influence the powerful few. That's the idea. Because together we are the solution. And I would like to call out a special thank to a person that's not here in the room with us today, but it's my co-founder, David Olson, and I know that you watch this online with your newborn son. So you have a good excuse. <laughs> and I want, from my bottom of my heart, say thank you. You were the first person I told about this idea. One week after that election day, back in November 2016. Yes, it's true. It was Donald Trump that gave me this idea. He got me realize that the climate crisis will never be solved by any of our world leaders. We must get together and solve it, people by people. And, and you, David, did not think I was crazy or that, or that the idea will be, will be impossible to achieve. No, in fact, you were the first person that totally believed and loved that idea. And the day after, I did not only have a good friend believing in, in me and the idea. I had an investor, co-founder and dedicated partner. You are the true leader because there is no moment without the first follower. Today, we have 700,000 followers. And I'm sorry because I can't invite all of you here to share the stage with us today. Instead, I invite all of you to help us develop this idea further. We have released the first version, but we will need your help to improve it and make it work. Every time we see something good for the climate, let us encourage that. Let us give climate love to climate action. And every time we see something bad for the environment, something we need to change, something a business or a leader needs to stop. Let us give them a warning. Let's make them stop. Because they will have no choice when we work together. And this is important. To solve the climate crisis, we need a lot of new ideas. We need to change the whole society. So when we have an idea, we need to give it away to someone that could implement that idea on large scale right now. Because we don't have time to wait. We also need to show persistence. We need to be brave. We need to show courage and help each other. Because people will say that nothing matters. People will 
tell us to give up. Some powerful people will also try to make us fail. They have already tried. We must tell them, we must show them that we're not alone. We must show them that we have the power, the power of many. And we are unstoppable. If we do that, we will succeed. But this will not happen by itself. It will take dedication, time and action. To so use social media to cooperate is just the start. We need to cooperate in the real world and on every level of society. We need climate action from our leaders and ourselves. As employees, as cons consumers, as families, as students, as teachers, as doctors, as investors. Yes, we need it everywhere and we need to help each other. We need to be together and we must start today. This is not just a window of opportunity. This is our window of survival. <clears throat> because we must have the honesty and courage to realize that in this case, failure can't be an option. Everything is at stake. It's only when we realize this, and only when we work together, we will succeed. And what we have done here today is actually a proof of concept that when we work together, we could do magic things. And I would like to invite everyone that has been involved in this event to the stage. Please come up here. <laughs> and 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 over 100 people not just here but through the whole world in every continent almost have worked really hard to make this day happen. And we also had many of the largest environmental organizations working together with us and everyone else. And this is truly unique. This hasn't happened before, and it will happen many times again, I assure you. We have also financed this whole event by crowdfunding from investors from all over the world. So this, is, this had been totally impossible if we haven't worked together. But we need to do much more, of course. So, I want you, all of you here, stand up if you believe in the power of many. Stand up if you believe in that. Thank you for today, and thank you for our future. Together, we are the solution.